video is mainly for folks that are testing our new base. However, I invite anyone to listen. The topic this evening for this evening is how to effectively evaluate shave soap performance. Our shave soap performs very well. The reason is because this testing process that I'm going to cover tonight. I'm sharing this with the community because there's a lot of inaccurate information in our community, especially when scoring or stack ranking is involved. The reason for this inaccurate information is there's a correct way to test shave soap or anything else. As hobbyists, researching and coming up with a good test requires a ton of research and time that is more than most hobbyists can invest. Hendrix Classics doesn't have anything to gain from this methodology being used in the community other than to have more accurate information about our products um, with everybody. My hope is that a group of enthusiasts will agree with this methodology and decide to use it to share really good information within our community. It can push artisans, myself included, to produce better products to justify claims, pricing, um, and to be more innovative. I presented this info to a, a group and there were many comments, including those from two healthy skeptics. I asked them to help test my new soap base. And the reason for this is that it doesn't really matter what I think or say about this testing method enthusiasts have to conclude for themselves that it's the best available in order to form a group that I think can drive value and innovation in this community. 100 or more years ago, people wanted accurate information. They decided that a standard systemic means of testing, which could be reproduced by others, was needed. They began working on methods calling it the scientific method. This method is widely used today and is the reason for many of the advancements we enjoy. Several years ago, I wanted to prove that safety razors are better than multi-blade cartridges and have the results uh, published in a dermatology journal. I was being advised by an expert. It quickly became apparent that this would take time and a lot of money, which I didn't have. The method I came up with isn't perfect according to the scientific method. However, it yields accurate results and isn't burdensome on folks that would like to use it. The, the method I'm presenting was designed to compare one soap against another one. When I was developing the current base, I ordered a tub of all the most respected soaps at that time. I would test my base against one and then the other, and I kept improving my base until I was satisfied with how it tested against all the soaps I purchased. Once I got the hang of it, I could draw pretty good conclusions with two shaves. Shaving, you know, once, um, you, one with one side of the face and the other, I'm about to get to that a little bit later. An important part of testing is reducing the number of variables. One of the two most important variables control for testing shave soap performance is to lather two shave bowls when shaving or face lathering and test two soaps, one on each side of your face. Doing this controls for many variables and allows immediate feedback. Immediate feedback is a very big deal. On the next shave, you reverse sides. So, you know, at least on my face, the right side, it has an easier go of it than the left side. So, when I'm testing soap, I have to use it on both sides in order to be able to do that so it takes two shaves. The next most important variable for control is using a consistent pre-shave regimen and recording the time from when the pre-shave procedure begins until you shave. I believe the single biggest factor, and when I say I, I believe it, it's based on a lot of research, um, 
the, the single biggest factor in shave quality is how well the whiskers are hydrated, which is what pre-shave prep is all about. Whisker thickness and density varies from person to person, so what's needed for you may be different than me. I'll share my pre-shave prep routine. You don't need to use this routine, but you do need to measure the time from when you wash the natural oils off of your face until you shave. Getting unexpected test results may very well depend on whiskers having longer to hydrate, and I've personally experienced this. So, when I'm getting ready, I hop in the shower. First thing I do is wash my face with a soapy washcloth. The time really should begin once I rinse the soap off of my face, but to keep from you know dripping water into the timer and, and ruining it, I, I do start the timer right when I step in the shower. Um, okay, once finished bathing, I apply oil to my face before getting out of the shower. I then dry, put on deodorant and all the other stuff, and then I begin lathering. A very lightly rounded 1 4th teaspoon is a good amount for HCC bases containing myristic acid like the test samples in the current test do. You'll see more shortly. Bias is, a significant, is significantly problematic when testing in the enthusiast community. We all have artisans that we especially like. I was testing Daddy's Little Girl against competition when developing the current base. I had to be ruthlessly honest with myself. A better way to control this is with blind samples, meaning that you don't know whose soap you're shaving with. We have done this with the first round of samples going out to testers with the new base. They will each receive six soap, six soap samples numbered one through six. They won't know which soap is which. You can do this at home by getting your wife or someone to give you two samples where you don't know what they are. Though if they're scented, you may know anyway. But nonetheless, they would get two little pieces of paper labeling them A and B. They would write down which is which, and after the shave, they'd give you the paper telling you which is which. For most shave soaps, a half teaspoon um, put on each paper on each piece of paper would be a good amount. I then rub it into the bottom of each bowl and begin lathering. It's best to have two identical brushes and two identical shave bowls, though many folks won't have these, so try to use as similar as you can. Um, and this touches back to don't make yourself crazy with this. The, the two things that are really most important are that you're fairly consistent with uh, the pre-shave prep and if you're not to have that time recorded so that you know and to shave one half of your face with one the other half with the other reversing signs the next time you shave. Uh, let's see I rub it into the bottle of each bowl and begin lathering. I'm, you're about to see video showing that. Uh, da, 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 da. I've come up with a method to give soaps being tested a fair shake when lathering, which I'll show you shortly, and this was really important when I was testing HCC soap against other bases. You know, I know how to lather HCC. Well, I'm testing against other bases. If I want to say that mine lathers equally or better, then I have to get a fair shake to the competition, and so that's why I think that part is important. Uh, okay, once lathering is complete, it's time to shave. Scoring entered into a spreadsheet with additional tabs added for additional tests. I'm happy to share the spreadsheet with anyone or a PDF for those who want to record by hand. Okay, now it's time to transition to how to lather. Hey, in this part of the video, I want to show you how to lather soap when you're testing it. And so, if you look here in, in the frame, this is a, a natural fiber brush soaking. Uh, I really prefer to use um, synthetic uh, for this purpose, but you know, other people may want to do something different. I've got my two samples, sample one, sample two. You can see that I've got the amount in there. Uh, and I've measured it, and if you look at this, this is 
one fourth teaspoon and you can see that it's, it's just slightly rounded. Okay, so we'll put that in the bowl here. Uh, then we've got two synthetic brushes. It's best if you can use two identical uh, bowls and two identical brushes. Not everybody has that, and so you do the best that you can, um, you know, or get the ones as close as you can. Uh, and then you see here, this is a little bowl of water. And this is a particularly good bowl because it has graduations on it. And when you're first doing this, um, less water is better. And so I'm going to just take my thumb and rub the soap into the bottom of the bowl. Okay, same thing on this one. Okay. And I don't have my timer sitting right in here, and I won't interrupt the movie to go get it, but I usually um, record the amount of time to lather. So, what we're going to do, this is a, a completely dry synthetic brush. We're going to dip it. Pretty good density there. So that one I would say is ready to go. And then you would repeat it over here. I would change the water. So let's just do that. And it has the same amount. Now you would be in this actual test, you would do the second bowl with another synthetic brush. Uh, preferably an identical one, but in case you're using natural fiber brushes, I want to show you how to do it. And what you do is you let it soak, and let me move the cup where hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm just holding it over there, I'm putting my hand around it, and I'm squeezing as hard as I can. So you can see I squeeze and I've got it over there so it's going to get all the water out. Let me show you how much water it gets out. Look at that. It's in just a couple of drops it spilled in there, but you know there's not much water in that brush. That's all it's doing. So we're going to give it a dip. all the way on that one but I would go again until I get it where I'm seeing some shine on it um, also this this video really does double duty this is a very good way to lather shave soap and a lot of people have um, I keep seeing in, in um, groups and forums and whatnot where folks are having trouble lathering uh, if you do it this way, you'll never have trouble. Because keep in mind, when you're lathering soap, it's all about getting the, the proper ratio of water to soap. And so if you're keeping it even, and you're just adding a little water at a time, like I'm doing here, you have to keep up with your signs you don't want to get them mixed up but you know I've got most of the soap out of there and when I dip it's going to give me the same amount every time and that is the key uh, some people also have more difficulty with natural fiber brushes than they do with regular and the reason for that is that they're not squeezing the water out and I showed you squeezing the water out just a moment ago uh, let's see also wanted to re-emphasize of course you want to have the same amount of soap from each sample this is a one quarter teaspoon and I showed you it was very slightly rounded 
that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Spreadsheet. You can see um, this is the master. And what you do is you can copy the master by clicking there, edit, copy, and then you can come over here. I've already done these, but let's come over here and then command, well, that you won't, you may have a PC, um, but command and paste is what I'm doing. I'm on a Mac. So, uh, but let's go back here to the sheet and start talking through it. Uh, the, the date goes here. As previously mentioned, you're going to shave one side of your face with one side, one soap and the other with the other. Um, here you put which sample is which. And so you're going to shave the left side of your face with, let's say, sample uh, A. And then over here it's going to be sample B. Uh, and then coming down on things that are the same, I usually have those as part of a template. I weigh my soap uh, before I send the spreadsheet out. I think I'll change this to, um, to soap measure. And as I've mentioned, for the, the current round of testing, a fourth of a teaspoon, which you saw in the earlier part of the video, is perfect. Um, and then for other soaps, uh, or for soaps that don't have my wristic like this, then I would say a uh, a half teaspoon is a gracious plenty. Um, the razor used, I always use the same razor when I'm testing. I want to eliminate variables as much as possible. So the razor, the smooth operator, the blade and number of uses. Um, you know, I'm always going to use the same blade. For me, it's probably going to be a, a statum and I will say on the statums, I'm going to keep it to one or two uses. Um, you know, really, the best would probably be to use a fresh blade with each shave, though, and that is what I do, though I don't want to ask other people to, to waste blades. Um, you know, the pre-shave prep, I've already explained what I do there. The time between pre-shave prep and shave. This is one of the areas that's really important to record. You can mess a lot of this up. Don't make yourself crazy doing it. But you need to know how much time between the pre-shave prep beginning and the shave. Because if you get shave results you weren't expecting, then that amount of time may be why. Um, which brush I used, uh, I used two Hendrix Classics uh, black synthetic brushes. You may not have two brushes exactly the same. Try to use two that are similar. They do need to be, but if, the, if you're using synthetics, they both need, if, need to be synthetic. If you're going to use a natural fiber, you need to have two of the same natural fiber. So that'd be, you know, two badgers or two boars or whatever. I do think that synthetics are best, but, you know, that doesn't mean you have to do that. The lathering procedure, I've already shown you how I do this. This verbiage just describes it, um, which bowls. A lot of people are not going to have two identical bowls. I do. If you don't, use two that are about the same. Um, I don't usually bloom soap. Uh, the number of passes completed. Time to lather in minutes. Uh lather density and this would probably be high medium or low um, there can be some subjectivity there as well so that one's not as important um, ease of lathering and so I used to assign numbers here and I stopped doing it because I just don't think that you can assign numbers that will give you meaningful information. So I just do a plus or a minus. So um, here, let me clear that. So in Excel, you can't just put the plus. If you do, Excel thinks you're starting a formula. So I'll, I just type a period. And then if I think it's easier to lather the soap in column B, I just put a little plus here. Um, and this isn't a definitive answer. You really don't know yet. When you're doing the first round, the first shave in a round of shaving, then 
what you put here really just tells you to watch for it in the next shave. And when I say a round of shaving, um, that's going to be a round of shaving is two shaves. So on one shave, you'll have um, your you know, uh, sample one on the left side of your face, sample two on the right side. In the second half of the round of shaving, which will be the next time you shave, you reverse sides. Okay, so coming down through here, you can see where uh, residual glide, I didn't think it was quite as good on this side. Um, and so, I'm, so with lather hydration for a pass, that merely means that it doesn't dry out. Or if it does dry out, you would put a minus wherever it dried out. Residual glide and glide rewetting the face. I'll tell you, I'm not a fan of residual glide. You know, shave soap's not that expensive. If you shave the soap off your face, I, I personally put more soap on my face. However, many people want residual glide, so we include that in the testing. So there's residual glide where you take the razor over part of your face that hasn't been, or part, you take the razor over your face where you've already shaved off the lather, and then also glide re-wetting the face. Cushion, um, that, that you really can't tell right away. Here's some things that help you decide whether there's good cushion. We've got, you know, the number of no-fault nicks or cuts. So by no-fault, I mean that you get a weeper uh, or a, a nick, usually it'll probably be a weeper, where there, you, there's no reason that you can see that you should have gotten that. And that's opposed to, say for example, when I'm using a safety razor right under my nose, um, if I'm not really careful, I'll bring in the, the razor at the wrong angle and it'll, it'll cause a weeper every time. So that would be, you know, my technique. That's not a no fault. You want to record the no fault. If you get a bunch of nicks or weepers on one side and not the other, you know, that, that tells you something to, uh, at this point, it would tell you to be aware of whether you get the same thing on the other side against the grain in general um, you're comparing these two soaps and so when you shave against the grain is there a difference and if so you would put a plus on the one that's better or a minus on the one that's not same thing for a, uh, against the grain on your neck against the grain on your upper lip and not everybody can shave against the grain and so if that's something you don't do, you would just put NA in those sample in these areas. Um, post shave feel with no balm. Um, the burn from splash. So I'll tell you, I don't usually use splash. I get fragrance from EDP. So what I do is I have um, a little bottle with alcohol in it and I just put some in my palm and rub it on my face and what I'm checking for is to see if one side burns more than the other. That's another indication the, of um, how much cushion you get. Um, and I would say, you know, when you want to score on the cushion, which is really important, you want to take into account the, um, you know, the feeling of the shaving against the grain, how many weepers or nicks or cuts you get, um, the post-shave feel if one side of your face feels worse than the other, that's a pretty strong indicator. Um, whether you get any burn from the splash that's more on one side than the other. Uh, and then, of course, the closeness of the shave. If, if one uh, of the soaps is causing you to get a closer shave, then you would want to note that. And then down here are the notes. And rather than describe the note, or actually, here's what I'll say about notes. Um, notes are something you can refer back to that will help you remember important information. So let's look at a shave that I did. Um, I didn't record the date, so this would be not accurate. I'd have to throw this out. Uh, so we've got the information here. Um, ease of lathering was better on this. Residual glide was not as good on this. See the little minus sign? And I didn't put any notes. 
So this is a shave where I messed something up and basically threw it out, but it's still in here. Okay, here's a better one on 1114. The left side was test soap three, the right side was badass. Um, remember when you get the spreadsheet from me, it's not gonna have the weight, it's gonna have the measurement because you you have to have a jeweler scale to be able to measure it. The Here is the razor that I use through a testing process. I'll always use the same razor. You know, a first use statum, um, standard pre-shave, Here's the amount of time. I have real bad ADHD, so on this one I got distracted somewhere. But that's good to know, because if I shave again and get different results, then I need to be aware that it was 46 minutes between stepping in the shower and starting to shave. The um, lathering method is dip. You've already seen me showing you that which brush I use, try to use two of the same, if not two very similar. Uh, the brush loading process, which we've already covered, which shave bowls I'm using. If you don't have two identical, try to use two similar. Okay, we did three passes, four minutes to lather, so I was probably really digging in and trying to make some conclusions because it never takes that long. Um, Okay, the density, medium, medium, high. And then everything is equal on all of these. There's no nicks or cuts. The closeness of the shave, I got a plus here with the badass. This doesn't tell me that badass is better um, because until I've done at least one more shave, I won't know. This tells me that I need to pay attention to this on the next shave when I complete the round. Both soaps perform very well. Need to monitor whether badass, uh, that's, a, that's a typo, whether badass is a closer shave when the sides are reversed. Let's see. Here, we've got everything. On the previous tab, I wrote that they were equal. Here, I just put equal signs. Lather quality, I removed this. You won't see this because, you know, how do you define lather quality? Uh, that has come out. Uh, okay, residual glide, glide re-wetting the face. Um, hmm, this is interesting. Four weepers on this side, none on the other. Everything slightly more sensitive left lip on the weeper area. No lather drying. Need another round of, detest, of testing to determine cushion. These two are close. And so when it's been a couple of days and I can't remember everything, those notes are going to be real helpful. And what those notes are going to remind me of is that I had four weepers on this side um, and they were all in the lip area. So it could be that I just wasn't paying close enough attention and I, you know, had a little too much pressure on that side. Um, assuming this is the first shave and a round of shaving, this doesn't, I don't draw any conclusions from this, though I uh, know that I'm going to watch for it next time when I reverse sides. Okay, 1118. I won't go over the things we've already gone through. Okay, we got nicks on each side. This shave was somewhat rough. Uh, it could have been that the statum blade ran out of juice. Could also be that I wasn't paying sufficient attention to a light touch with the razor. I think I may have mentioned this. I have really bad ADHD and my mind wanders. This shave was very close. So I've said before, for me, chasing the baby butt doesn't yield good results. So this was a shave where um, I was really putting the cushion to the test and it, it was kind of a rough shave. Um, you know, all of this said the soaps performed equally. And these notes will help me remember. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much.